Now, George Clooney has it all. A successful movie career, gorgeous good looks and a wife he never argues with, apparently. I quote Mr Clooney, uh, we haven't <laughs> ever had an argument, but experts say it can be good to argue and setting time uh, specifically aside to Roy can be beneficial to your relationship. So, would you schedule an argument, Natalie? Now, you are going to be very, very surprised by this because this is not very me, but I actually do believe in, believe in that because the first time Mark and I ever went to a marriage guidance counsellor, our marriage was right at the very end. We were, like, at the end of our tether. We weren't communicating properly. We were just kind of... Not having a proper argument, but just bickering all day about things that were really not quite big things that we needed to approach and need to discuss. We were doing that thing where one of us would start and the other one would kind of go, oh, yeah, well, I know what you're saying. And just in that really toxic place that I think so many relationships can get into. And we went to this um, therapist and she said, she suggested that we get a timer and we give each other a certain amount of time. And I have given this advice so many times to people and they've come back to me and said, it actually really worked. It's hard, because you have to listen to each other. <laughs> so um, you don't speak when the other person speak. is... So you can decide whether time. it's one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, yeah. whatever you want. I'd, I would suggest starting with one minute. And you put the timer on, you do not say a word. And you actually have to listen to your partner. And But the other... The caveat to it was also that we weren't allowed to bring anything up of any substance the whole of the rest of the day. So you, had, so you knew that there was a time of day that you were going to discuss stuff. And, oh, my God, it really worked, girls. I, I, I'm, honestly, it really worked. But that's obviously, like, big, deep stuff. It's not sort of you didn't empty the dishwasher this morning stuff. But, but I think sometimes those little things can become the big, deep stuff because you stop seeing each other. You just all... Everybody's nagging everybody and you just lose your... Yeah. You know, the spontaneity of just being yourselves. Like, who you lose who you are, actually, mm. in a relationship by, by going on. So I, I think it's the little stuff or the big stuff, actually. Yeah. Mm. Are you going to try it, Jane? <laughs> well, Gary and I, what is it now, 21 years, never a crossword. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. It's unbelievable. We're just like George and Amal <laughs> in so many ways. No. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am going to try that, actually. Really? In fact... Properly? Yeah. I've been out and bought a little timer, look. Oh, my God, it looks exactly <laughs> like Gary. <laughs> You bought a timer. That's going to distract. I'm, I've bought a little timer, <laughs> and there's lots of options on here. I won't be going for the 55 minute option. I think yeah. I've run out of things. <laughs> to say. One minute. But you know, I think we're both guilty of, at the times that we do actually say, right, okay, we need to have a chat. We talk over each other. Yeah. And so I think that's perfect if you can go right. This is my turn to speak, and then you do actually. I think a lot of couples you end up. You're aware that the other person's speaking, but because you're so desperate to get your point yeah. of view in, you're not really listening, yeah. so you're just waiting and to was, go over. And that was one of the other th bits of advice that she gave us. She said, you don't necessarily have to answer the other person. So you might vent or you might say something, and if the person's, it's the next person's turn and they don't actually want to respond to that, they don't have to... And it, it takes a bit of work, but it, it changed the course of our marriage, for sure. What about you and Frank? Do you oh, need you see, a timer? I was just there. No, exactly. I mean, my problem with that would be having to wait to the day that the timer's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's the building up. But I guess if you're working through any sort of a problem or if there is yeah. an issue in a relationship... You're in a bit of an SOS situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're willing to try anything. And if that does work and it allows that, that peace and space to, to allow the other person yeah. to talk... I, I, it, the way you described it there absolutely yeah. makes sense mm. to me. But I do think sometimes an argument, just the essence of an argument is when you just have a good old blowout and you mm, just yeah. let rip and then it moves on really quickly. And if you can do it that way... Which we you know. do about five times a week, I'd say. <laughs> and I, like love that. I wouldn't want to not argue. Uh, do you do. still do your... Because you, you, you and your family did, like, a sort of a once-a-week sit-down to vent your... Passing the stick round and everyone yeah. thinking, no, the girls begged us. They even, <laughs> they even offered to pay us to stop. <laughs> We'd done it for them so that they could get a chance to speak and they said it had got really boring. <laughs> you knew it was time to move on. <laughs> what about you, Syrah? Would you schedule? 
No, I wouldn't. And also, you know, when you hear about these celebrities that have got actually a very privileged life, they've got money, they can, they've got two kids who've been looked after, you know, they've got everything. And that standard of like, well, we don't argue, it just puts pressure on everybody else. You've got two kids, you've been in lockdown, you know, you, you lost your job, you know, it's, it's, it's actually quite natural thing to kind of let off steam. Yeah. And, and Steve and I let off steam quite regularly. And I let my children into that world. We don't hide mm arguing from each other because mm. that's the real world I want them to know how to stick up for themselves how to present an argument um, and sometimes they say well mummy actually you were wrong in that that was you know that was a, not the right reason to have an argument so I don't it's it does it's not part of it's our arguing isn't a, a reflection on our relationship going wrong it's about everyday life we don't yeah. argue every second minute but we will have a good argument every now and then it's about about having an opinion and yeah. i don't think that's a bad thing oh absolutely i think arguing is such, because it's the work of a relationship yeah. isn't it it's just when we're yeah. young we think oh we shouldn't have to work in a relationship but really as you get older you realize you do and and and, and you, you, i'm the same i won't hide it from the girls but we won't either hide making up so that they see that there's been a yeah. closure to it. Yeah. Because I think sort of a yeah. simmering argument can also make a child feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, but, but Maddie's yeah. brilliant. I'm very, very proud of Maddie. She will, like, some 90% of the time, Mark is absolutely lovely, but for 10%, sometimes he can be so impossible. And he's like... And Maddie has worked, on, has worked on this brilliant impersonation of him, but she always leaves it to exactly the right time, because if you do it too soon, then it might make him more angry. But she'll do it, and I don't think I ever love Mark as much as those times when I see him with tears streaming down his face, laughing at himself as his daughter shows him the error of his ways. Uh, and it, yeah. I, I just love it. I love that he can laugh at that. I guess and back you have to, to diffuse that way. It's back to timing, though, isn't it? It's she's, all about the timing. Yeah, yeah and she's mastered it. Yeah. Okay.